Hello, my name is Saul Cantu, and this is Texas Math Mundo. Today, we have an interview with legendary coach Jonathan Trim. Now, this interview is especially important and personal for me because this is the man that introduced me to the whole UIL scene. He is the one that set the standard in my mind for coaches uh, to conduct and run a, an effective team. All right, Texas Math Mundo audience, we have a real treat in store for us. We have legendary coach Jonathan Trin. And this interview is really uh, special to me because this is the man that introduced me to it all 20 something years ago. I did not know anything. He set the standard for me to follow when it comes to coaching and leading a UIL academic team. Welcome, Jonathan Trent. Thanks for being here. No, thank you, uh, my friend, uh, Sal. You, uh, you know, we've been friends and know each other for so long. I was like, you know, we pretty much almost joined the hip, right? <laughs> yes, you know, I, I really appreciate our friendship. I thank you for, uh, mm -hmm. for coming to this interview. Um, uh, we go, we go way back, man. You ha and I know that you have a wealth of wisdom and knowledge to share with the audience. That's why I'm really happy you're here for this interview. But let's start with uh, with now. Uh, what are you up to nowadays? Um, how are you handling the pandemic? What's going on in your life? Well, you know the pandemic is, uh, you know, it's been, uh, it's been uh, different. You know, it's, it's been, uh, you know, uh, it, it just changed the way you approach now to teaching to, uh, you know, motivating students to learning, you know, seeing that across the board. I mean, it, it, it's, it's been tough, you know, uh, you know, that, you know, uh, you know, when you, you want to go out there and do things, you know, be, be like hands on. The pandemic is not for people like myself who are hands on. Like, we like to get our hands dirty. We like to get our hands into every pot, you know. And it's tough for people like me. I mean, we are like struggling. Like I'm struggling, big time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I know you are too because I know you. <laughs> you were <laughs> telling me like, hey, I'm trying to host you know practice and stuff and do it virtually. But you know, you managed to do a good job uh, uh, getting around that virtual. I know that every day you got the, the practice in, but you know it's not the same thing as like having them in that building. Absolutely. School, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You know, sitting down next to them and go over stuff and see, you know the eyes contact with them, let them look at you, or they told you, like, you know what, I don't, uh, I don't think I can do it, or I don't think I have what it takes. It's not, no, you know, it's not about the math and the science. You know that. I know, I, I know. Mean, we're getting students to compete at this level, they are smart. Everyone is getting yes. that ability at any given day to, to outdo each other, right? As, Absolutely. As an individual, as a team. So the question is that, what, how do we get that, that kid to get to the next level where they think they can't do it, or, or they think that other kids are smarter than they are, quote unquote, right? Yes. And it has to be that interaction, that face-to-face, -face, you know, talk, sitting down, you know, say, you know what, let's close that door and let's have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Oh, you know absolutely. what I mean? So <laughs> I am going to ask you about how you motivate kids uh, and everything, but you're right. It, the virtual setting is much tougher to make that connection to inspire them, to, to, to infect them with your passion for the subject. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. How about career-wise? What are you up to nowadays? Uh, where are you at uh, in your career? The, the last two years, you know, I, uh, you know, as you know, I, I stepped away from the principal ship uh, after five years, and uh, I am now at the central office level. I, uh, you know, uh, I've been, uh, you know, uh, uh, how, how I say to the next calling, uh, I deal with uh, some of our most struggling school in Houston ISD. And you know, I uh, support them. Uh, I you know I lend my expertise and also the spend time provide that, that layer of support that historically, you know, that some of our schools lack that 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 you know push and support. And I think that with my background knowledge in turnaround works in at risk students in in students who are uh, uh, you know uh, uh, second language learners, which a lot of the school that I have now has a large population there. Uh, we we tend to now have a different approach now to support uh, that group of students that need that 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 lens. So I think you know I, I I'm I, you know I in my field I think that I'm I'm doing uh, a good job in supporting that because I think that my principal really appreciate that that you know that and you know uh, I'm so blessed. Like I said, I have seven schools I support. Uh, you know Yates, uh, Wheatley, North Forest, Cashmere, uh, Booker T. Washington, of course Wisdom uh, High School, my former schools and. Uh, 
and uh, she will grow with candy. Uh, some of those schools are, you know, either uh, just not excellent state, you know, accountability uh, uh, rating or, you know, in the process now working on that. And the good thing is that, you know, our superintendent um, has done a good job in placing uh, certain leaders at these campus now and, 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 and making that changes where these principals are amazing. Like I say, I, I support a, a group of principals that are like, you know, sometimes, you know, I, I feel like I don't deserve the credit for what they do. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're being modest. Office, right? You know, and I provide that push and support, but, you know, they're, they're pretty, mm. they're, they're, they're tier one, they're, they're executive leader themselves, you know, that, that wants to succeed, that one that, that has a wealth of knowledge too. So it's a good mixture of, you know, that hands on my approach plus the group of principals we have now. So that's my work now is that to make sure that, you know, it doesn't matter what school you are. No, my, you know our philosophy. Yes. Students can learn. Yes, there is no learn. such thing as a failing school, right? Yes. It's only a failing adults, right? That we don't have a right lens to push in to make sure our students learn. So if an adult get our ass together, student will learn. I mean, you know, that's the philosophy we have, right? So, yes. you know, and I just carried that to you this world, you know, basically. And so, but, you know, you're being a little bit modest. I do know that you are one of the greatest leader of leaders. And that's, uh, that's from knowing you for all these years. So that's awesome. Awesome. I was going to say, um, but when you're not working, I know that takes a lot of your time. I mean, it's, it really consumes you. But when you get a chance to uh, be apart from work, how do, you, uh, how do you enjoy yourself? Well, I know this sounds really, really dumb. Prior to the, uh, to the COVID, if I'm not working in my role as my official job, I get in there with the joy with kids. That's my, you know, I travel this weekend with them, you know, even as a principal. <laughs> we went to a so many tournaments on the Saturday term that that is my, I know it sounds, you know, uh, contrived sometimes when I say that, but you, you know my work. I know. That is my out. That is my fun. You know, believe it or not, I have fun doing it, you know. Um, uh, now, during the pandemic, we don't have that anymore, so I readjust. And as you know, you know, my I told you this a couple of years ago about my future, you know, uh, endeavor. Um, you know, I'm planning to, uh, you know, I've been watching a lot of YouTube on traveling, like different countries, okay. the cost of living, you know, different places, different things to do. So when I get the opportunity, you know, in the near future, I want to start doing that. I want to start, you know, uh, researching the places where you know uh, I can go to, you know, and, and, and visit, and just that what I saw on YouTube channel. And, Things like that. So. You know, knowing you the way I know you, it's hard to imagine Jonathan Trin slowing down. I just cannot imagine Jonathan Trin slowing down, man. You put that pedal to the metal and you go, go, go. So it'd be interesting to see you slow down a bit, but I'm skeptical. Well, I'll probably do some consulting works and stuff. I mean, I, I know mm -hmm. there, there's a couple of school principals that talked to me already, so... You know, I am, uh, you know, I'm planning on doing that, you know, but, okay. uh, you know, but still, I want, I want to go back and do something I love to do. Yes. I want to support schools on coaching leadership systems, you know, oh. achievements, UIL, you know, academic achievements, and it was also UIL competition. That's, that's my passion, you know, and, and that's, you know, I'm, I'm going to do some kind of that capacity at a part-time basis, but I think that's what, you know. Well, there'd be uh, no one for. better for the job. No one more qualified yeah. and no one better. So, you have a very fascinating story because I know your story a bit, but I want you to share with the audience. You know, I want you to discuss your past. Uh, how did you get to Houston? How did that happen? Where, where did you come from? Well, I was born in Vietnam. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I came here, you know, uh, uh, after the Vietnam War. Uh, you know, you know that we, uh, you know, uh, the South lost and American pulled out. <clears throat> so we became the typical one of those early years in the, in the uh, late 70s. Uh, early 80s of boat refugees, you know, so when you hear of like uh, the, the, the boat people, that's really referring to the Vietnamese boat people, you know, and I know now the term is used differently, but yeah. that's really what that term came from. And literally, it's boat. I mean, anything that floats, we can hop on, we escape. Because during that time, people realize the persecutions, the hungers, and especially that you have, you know, like my father that, that fought, you know, in the South, as a you know, soldier in the South Vietnamese uh, military. Uh, we are like, you know, enemy of the state, you know, we are considered to be enemy of the state. So when they, you know, when the, when the, the North came in, the Viet Cong came in and, 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 and 
you know, there's a lot, you know, there's no persecutions, you know, that's, that's no way around it, you know, uh, people get sent to rehabilitation camps, you know, yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. some of them, you know, they make it out, some of them came out not the same as they were before, and, you know, it was, it was a harsh condition, and, you know, uh, being hungry all the time, you know, uh, you know, just starvation is rampant, uh, you know, and corruptions, and just, wow. you know, during that time, now, I, I was about, you know, nine years old in in nine about eight years old in nineteen seventy five when we when down on fell and then signed on fell. Uh, I remember in the airport waiting, you know, for a helicopter or something supposed to go pick us up. So, you know, as I remember sitting there, right, and I hear gunshot fire and so on. Next thing I know, you know, uh, uh, the the vote note really soldier came in and pick everybody up and then somehow, you know, we're told to go home, right? So we went home. And, uh, you know, it just, you know, uh, uh, three years later, my parent and you know, my dad shows up and, you know, my parents woke us up in the middle of the night and say, uh, you know, uh, we got these little uh, bag plastic, we put stuff in, and, you know, just basically a, a couple pair of shorts and t-shirt practically, that's it. That's all we brought, you know, for each kid. And uh, we hop on, you know, we march down to the, to the train station some day, we took a train down to the, to the, uh, to another, another village, and we went there and hide out in the beach. A few days later, we hop on literally this raft. I mean, I can't do that. Oh, it wasn't even a boat. <laughs> I mean, it was a, a raft with an outboard engine and set sail into the Pacific Oceans for seven days. And that's how we escaped Vietnam, literally. <laughs> well, I can't even imagine the profound impact that experience has had on your, on your uh, perspective on the world and life. No wonder you want to feed everybody. Every time I see you, you like you throw a banquet, man. You uh, so that maybe it stems from that. My God. Yeah, no, it is. It, this is it stems from uh, you know. I hate seeing people hungry. I hate seeing people, you know, not having food. I hate you know the feeling of of hunger. You know, I think that's why it's close to my heart. You know, so so did you land in Houston? Uh, yeah. So we actually we did. We land. Um, well, it's, it's a little more story. I didn't know, okay, let me go into my autobiography, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> we actually got, so a few days out, the, the engine died. We're just drifting in the Pacific Ocean. Literally, if I'm sitting down, I can put my hands out and I touch the wave. That's wow. how close we are. We're like, like almost level, okay? Uh, you know, and, um, you know, we have sun blister. I mean, you, you, imagine every time, you, you can time, you know, like a rhythmic wave hits the side, salt water splashed in, it hit the blister and the burn, and it's that, not, it got, after a while, it, it, it pain, but you got used to it. It's kind of like a rhythmic thing. Every every few seconds, you kind of expect the pain, so you know it's coming. So you know what? Your mind just kind of numb to it, right? Wow. It hurts, but you just, your mind kind of numb to it. And um, and I remember uh, a big ship came out and, and picked us up and took us, uh, you know, into shore. But it turned out to be the Chinese Navy or Coast or something like that. And um, they took us to this big island called Hainan off the coast of China. And this is from my dad's side, side now, like he explained to me, uh, you know, uh, years later on. Uh, they were supposed to deport us back to Vietnam. Because you know, during that time, China, of course, you know, still communist, and they're communists in Vietnam, still communist. They were like, you know, uh, I guess, uh, you know, on the same side. But uh, there, there was some kind of conflict. I don't know what happened there, but you know, between the two countries. But the point was that my dad. Well, we're we're also half. I'm half Chinese. My dad's child is Chinese descent. He speaks fluent Mandarin and Cantonese. Okay, yeah, so he, he speaks fluent. Okay? okay. Unfortunately, I didn't get the chance to learn Chinese. You know, but you know, he he, he can read and write. Okay, so uh, he basically told him that if you 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 repatriate back to Vietnam. You might as well just give us a death sentence, something like that, to that effect. They felt sorry for us and let us go. And uh, they, they uh, you know, repaired the boat, and um, and um, and we set sail to uh, to Hong Kong. Uh, basically, they, they told us just to follow the coastline, you know, uh, going uh, I think north. Something that my dad is more like a navigator, and he, he kind of don't understand. So he followed their instruction, and we made it to Hong Kong. So we got there. We uh, you know. Uh, we stayed there for, for several months, and then um, and then uh, we got exit visa uh, uh, as a refugee status, 
uh, to leave. And then, of course, during that time, there were several countries that taking the Vietnamese uh, boat refugees in the uh, in 1978. Um, I think France, United States, Australia. Uh, I don't know. There might be another country somewhere in there. No. But of course, my dad worked with the American, you know, side, so he knows, you know, nothing but America. So he we, we chose Houston. So I think there was several port entry in Houston, maybe Houston was one of them, Los Angeles another one, maybe Virginia, Beach or something was another one. So he just chose Houston. And I think the reason why he chose Houston was John Wayne, because they saw a lot of John Wayne movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Funny. so that's that's why he chose Texas, you know, Houston. <laughs> you know, I, you know, that's a wonderful story. That's interesting. So you start school in Houston. Um, did you know any English? Well, no, not one word. I mean, uh, it was, it, you know, during that time, bilingual, I mean, uh, bilingual or ESL education doesn't exist, okay? Uh, um. Me, my my younger brother, sister, different ages, right? And my older sister, all placed in the same exact English class, like together. Wow. <laughs> and then, of course, there was a small group of, uh, of Hispanic students that speak Spanish, right? The yeah. teachers spoke Spanish, so I think... We all learned spoke Spanish. We like, literally <laughs> spoke Spanish for the first few months in the United States. Not knowing that was not English, we thought it was English. <laughs> all of my struggle was that. <laughs> That's funny. <I'm> <laughs> so you end up going to uh, Pasadena Adobe, is that correct? Yes. After a few years, uh, uh, we went to Berkeley Elementary, Berkeley uh, uh, Lincoln Middle School oh, okay. during that time. Uh, uh, Berkeley and Lincoln combined together to become a K-8 campus years later on. And that's why now you hit you see Berkeley Lincoln, but back then a uh, Berkeley and Lincoln was a two separate school. Okay. Okay. Uh, people don't know that history. So no, no. one's a secondary school, one's an elementary school. That's a separate you know, building. Yeah. Um, and they combined that. Uh, but the uh, so basically uh, you know uh, we 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 save up the money, we move to uh, the hobby area, and then I end up you know going to Adobe High School. Okay. Wow. Wow. So that's so fascinating. And we could spend forever in any segment because it's very yeah, interesting. Yeah, we, we we just talk about you know. And that's what I said. We talk about my autobiography. <laughs> <or> what? <laughs> so, but because it's so fascinating, it's such an interesting story, and it's very fascinating. I do want to get um. So I know a major impact. Did you go to the military immediately after that? Is that you're a Marine, yeah. right? A proud Marine. Uh, you know, I I you know. I was never really, really a good, good English student to begin with. <laughs> I struggled in English big time, you know. Uh, so, you know, I, I didn't graduate, you know, like top of my class or in anything great like that. You know, I graduated, you know, okay, but you know, uh, uh, but you know, uh, so I, uh, you know, of course, my family didn't have any money, to, uh, college fund and stuff. You know, all my family, all my sister, uh, myself, or, or, or my older sister. Uh, we go to college because you know either we work part time or uh, my sister I think got a scholarship, partial scholarship. But either way, we, you know we have to figure a way how to go to college, right? But like, that's not an option. We have to those sports like brain to our head that you're gonna study, do hard work, study well, do well, and go to college, right? So we, we did that. So you know, uh, you know, and um, so so we you know I I joined the military, you know, because of the of the uh, of, you know, they were gonna pay for my college. Yeah. Okay. Wow. And I know. Uh that has shaped your leadership style. I, I mean, I, it must have, I imagine, because uh, I, I know the leadership qualities that you have, and I just, uh, maybe your life experience and combining with some military, um, but yeah, you're a very natural leader if I've ever seen one. Well, thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. So, where did you graduate from college? Yeah, I graduated from Texas Southern University. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. You're a proud tiger. Yep, I'm a proud tiger. All right. yeah, I'm a TSU. Alumni of Tiger, and I support wholeheartedly. Hey, Tiger Pride. I'm all about that. Although I went across the street to U of H, but still, same area. <laughs> um, so then you enter your career, uh, and how did you uh, end up g going into, well, how, what was your introduction to UIL coaching and the UIL scene? So after I got back from, uh, from the military, you know, I, I you know, uh, in 1994, uh, I, um, you know, I, I work in the lab for a while. You know, my degree was about chemistry. You know, so um, I work in the lab for a while. And it was really boring. You know, you run, you know, tests and essays and things like that. You know, uh, you know, it's just mundane. You know, and I just didn't. I, I feel like you know, you, you, you see, you sit there in that box. <laughs> you run, you run, 
you know, data and you run, you know, process, you know, uh, you process things. That's all you do. You process samples and things like that. And you, you write a report and you document and you send it on to the next level, kind of like, you know? And, uh, um, you know, it just, it wasn't like, I envisioned what it would be, you know, uh, for my background, you know? So, uh, so I said, you know what, let me, uh, you know, uh, uh, work on my master. So I started to take some graduate courses and teaching, you know, uh, college level courses, right? And um, not teaching, but, you know, it's a TA. That's, yeah, sure. I, 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 I'm the one that grand doer this thing, right? I'm not like, you know, Cheap teaching. labor, cheap labor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, so I was teaching these lab courses, you know, as a TA teach these lab courses. Mm -hmm. So it, but see, this, this is the scam the universe has gone on, right? Science lab is three hours long, but it's only one credit hours. When you get paid, you don't get paid for the amount of hours you, you in the class, right? You mm -hmm. get paid by semester credits. Mm -hmm. So I was getting paid, like, I think during that time, like, $18 an hour or something like that. <laughs> now, in the mid-90s, $18 was pretty doggone good money, but then we realized that was three hours I put into that class <laughs> for that lab course, right? <laughs> so you did the math, it's really $6 an hour. <laughs> <laughs> funny, funny. <laughs> so, but, you know, and but the, the, the funny thing was just that I um, I have several people have tell me that, hey, you know, you have this ability to break things down very simplistic into like a basic, and as an ESL student, I don't use a lot of jargon. I use basic language to explain things, right? Because in my head, it makes sense to me, so I figured that makes sense to people. Even though I became more educated and I learned all these fancy jargon, but I told myself, if you want to explain something to people and they don't have your degree and they're learning what you, that degree, they're trying to learn that degree, they're trying to learn that, you know, but they have, if, they, if they're asking you for clarification, it means that they didn't get it the first time around. Yeah. So if they didn't get it first time around, why would you use the same jargon and, and high level frequency of wording that they have from understand? If they understood yeah. the first time, they would understand those word right and connect it and make sense to them. But they didn't. They come to your tutorial, you know, in, in your office hour. Obviously, they didn't get it. So you have to change your way to explaining that. Yeah. Don't repeat what you did in the classroom using the on level stuff, right? If they come to your tutorial, it means that they're struggling. Do something different. You know, and we now call it, you know, uh, 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 interventions or remediation, right? But back then, we just like, you know, sometimes you go in and you see your press professor or TA and they explain the same thing in the, in the classroom. And the guys just sit there looking like, well, you, know, you, you just told me that in the classroom, yeah. you know, yesterday and I didn't get that. That's why I'm here. You told me the same thing. I still don't care, you know. <laughs> so it was, it was one of those things, you know. <laughs> so you knew that your calling was education. <laughs> yes. To go and into I, People keep telling me you are like I have several kids, all right, or kids that were you know it's, it's a few years younger than I did that time. I said, man, if you were my science teacher, man, I would got this thing, I would be pregnant. And there was like I was seeing some good compliment, maybe it got to my head, right? So I'm going like, hmm, maybe I can break this stuff down simplistically. You know, oh, I, yeah, I can yeah. actually tell them how a process would that's complex into some simpler work that would make sense to them. I said, okay, let me try teaching. <laughs> so that's yeah. what I got to teach. All right. And then you uh, found the UIL scene shortly after? Yeah, so basically my first year of teaching was at Kashmir High School. Oh, wow. And I'll tell you a funny story about how the circle of life of my my career comes back in full circle, right? Because earlier I mentioned to you, what's one of my schools I support now? Kashmir. Kashmir High School. I went, you know, I, I'm, I, I see my old classroom building you know, I have some amazing uh, mentor, okay? Coach Warren, Lachey Watts was the department chair, you know, and you know, uh, Robertson was, uh, you know, she, I, I found she passed away, uh, was an amazing science teacher. We have a, a really strong science department and Coach Warren, you know, he's, you know, he's one of those guys, you know, he's a, a football coach. He's a coach, an old coach, but, you know, and I learned about him holding kids accountable, motivation kids and stuff in the classroom. So. So he was my mentor teacher, you know, assigned uh, during that time for science, right? So, you know, it, it's my first time in, in an inner city school environment. To learn. I mean, I grew up in a house in Croatia in Allen Parkway, where I first came, when I came to the United States. So I, I know about, you know, inner city, but as an as a ESL inner city learner versus now a teacher teaching inner city students, and my perspective is from an immigrant ESL point of view versus, you know, uh, you know, a, a, a minority point of view that is American born is learning modality is different. So it, it's, you can't just take what you know up here from your perspective, even though you grew in the same neighborhood and say, okay, let me push this narrative down because then it's not going to work. 
because the, the culture difference there. So I have to learn that, and I learned that during those that year, those years at Cashman High School. So I learned a lot, and during that time, they asked me to take a student to the district meeting. That's the first time I've been introduced from my teacher's point of view at the UIL level. It's my first year. I didn't do much. I sat in the waiting room, and, you know, and I let other people do it, and I kind of followed through, you know, and these things like that. I never thought anything about it, and then, you know, and that was the only year I did that. Then a couple of years later, of course, you know, I went to Fort Bend, okay? And then that's when you uh, you encounter Ermine Minard. Yep. Right? And right. Yep. I went to Elkins High School. Elkins was a brand new school, was being built in that time. During that time, I live, I live in Missouri City now. I moved down there. And, you know, I got to school. So I'm driving literally an hour and a half every day to work to Kashmir. And you remember during that time in the mid-90s, 59 was under construction. Mm -hmm. It got down to two lane narrow, mm -hmm. two lanes, right? Oh, my God. You're talking about a parking lot. You know, it, it was like 288 now. <laughs> during that time, right? So, uh, you know, so it was a parking lot. And it was an hour and a half commute each way, literally, in, in rush hour. So, you know, I, I, I went to, uh, I went, uh, applied, and, and I got a job at, uh, you know, uh, Elkins High School. And I ran to Irma Minor, and she is the first person that got me involved in UIL and taught me the coaching, the, 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 the finite part of UIL coaching. And I learned everything from her. I mean, that's, wow. that's who I learned the wow. UIL process from. She came in as a middle school coach at First Colony, and she came to, uh, no, uh, they're at the high school, and then, of course, you know, and then both of y'all end up going to Hightower, where our paths cross. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you all got me into it, but it, it wasn't hard to get me into it. Yeah. It, it was so much fun. You, you were coaching chess, I remember. Right? Yes, and I was doing a chess hey, team. This, this, this new math teacher we got in the math department because you know I was in the science department, yeah, right. right? You know, and and you know, and and I think something happened that year where you know she said, you know what, I. Uh, I'm going to take some some time off coaching. So so she handed it over to me to pretty much not be the number one, not the number two anymore, yeah. right? And um, and I said, well, I need I need a partner in crap because I, I'm teaching all these low. During that time, I had four preps, four different <clears throat> preps, right? I mean, like, I was killing myself teaching four different preps, okay, and then coaching UIL. So I found you. I said, and I, I remember you were, like, thrilled about this, right? But I told you about it, like, Mm, I don't know about that. Let me think about that. I told you. I tell you what. Just come with me to one term. Just, just come along. Don't have to do anything. You don't like it. I'm fine with it. You know. You know. We went to Bridge City, but you know, Bridge City was that first tournament every year, and I was hooked. You got me hooked. And I knew, I knew if I just get you to come with me on that bus and get into the waiting room and talk to those coaches, and see the, the the process, the camaraderie that we have as coaches, yes. UIL coaches. You're going to love it because that's the so, nature of what, you know. <laughs> you know, so, Jonathan, you know, I've seen you go up the hierarchy. You know, you're now the boss of my boss. So I've seen you, but I will never be as impressed, I think, as how I saw you lead that team at Hightower. You set the standard for which I have striven to reach ever since, ever in my coaching career. Those kids gravitated to you. It, you know, it might as well have been God talking to them. That's how they followed you. Your word, they hung on every single word, and you led them. Like, I, I've never seen an individual lead a group of kids before. And I, I remember those days. And I remember how fascinated I was with your leadership with those kids. And, I, you know, like I say, that set the standard for me. There will never be. That's the standard I strive to reach when I coach now. You know, so I just want you to know that, man, how incredibly impressed I was Uh the way you handled that team at Hightower, man, that was just, that was something to witness. Yeah, I mean, what we did in those days, I don't know, nowadays people frown on it, you know, the legality involved, the, the personal relationship we have with our students. I mean, come on. So, they were in my house, yeah. okay, on the weekends. I remember. Okay, eating, they grew up with my kids, like literally in my kitchen. Practicing UIL with a timer. Okay, we're over there doing problems and stuff as a team. And we're all there, you know, Chinese food pizza yeah. and stuff like that. In the middle of my kitchen, practicing, you know. Because you know that time I live in the same zone, right? Yeah, yes. I live there, so it's very centrally located. And I don't know we do that nowadays. Right? Yeah. Because nowadays, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a touchy issue. It's a different world. It's a different world. But it's like, you know, I look at, we have such great kids. I mean, like, oh, my God, they're like, 
And when I say kids, I, I think they're my children, literally. Yeah, so but I see, know. during that time, you know, I'm, I don't think I'm old enough to be their parents, but so I'm like a, a, like a much older brother, kind of like, you know? <laughs> And you know, that wasn't the last chapter. Before you exit teaching into administration, you had one, you go over to Dulles and establish the groundwork for that dynasty. You know, I had Fang Lee on a couple weeks ago, and he explained how you and him and that whole group established that Dulles framework. That, that, was, a, that was an accident. You know that, right? Because you already know the story of why I left High Tower. You I do know the story. Why I left, you know. And then it was kind of coincidence because it's like vivid. I still remember vividly, right? We, we, we were in the writing room. We were writing this test, right? And we actually, that year, it was the, the term, the district term was, was held where? At Hightower. Yeah. So we, we, we grew, we grew that paper. I'm going like, what the heck? You know, we, 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 we track our, our, compo- our opponent, right? Yeah, we, we do. Track to see who these are. We got to know who, who's who, in what area, what region. Yes. We got to know like, what the score looks like. We got to know what our kids' score looks like and what we need to do to get to that next level to, to compete, right? Yes. All of a sudden, there's these kids, a group of kids, but one of them is Fang Lee, that I never heard or seen before ever. He doesn't go to any tournament, no. nothing. Show for district and answer like 76 or 78 yeah. questions out of 80. So I'm thinking like, okay, you know, every now and then you run through one of those papers. Some kid randomly go through just put yeah, numbers yeah, yeah. in there, right? Because they know they have to answer every, you know, and they just put numbers there. So I'm going like, okay, so I'm grading this thing. And as I'm grading this thing, I'm looking like, there's a pattern here. I'm like, this kid looked like he know what he's doing here because he's, he's not off on this calculation. He, he know the basic trick, but, you know, in his rush to do thing, he just makes some minor mistakes. Yeah, so. I'm like, man, if this kid is being trained properly, we, 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 we looked at each other and I told you this exactly what I told you. If this kid had a real coach, right, a good coach, he would be a state champion. Remember I told you this? And it happened. He'd be a state champion. <laughs> and it happened. And then, and then we went on. We didn't think anything about it. We got saved and ready. And oh, lo and behold, later on, a, a month and a half, a month and a half later, you know, I, I, you know, I said, you know what? So I, I pick up a phone call and I call Judy Matney, the department chair over there at, at, at West, I mean, at uh, Dover High School, and say, "Hey, you know, you, I know that you want me to go with Dover, you know, uh, you know, and um, uh, you still have a position available." He said, "Well, I don't, but let me talk to my principal, <laughs> figure out something, right?" And I thank her a lot. And Judy Matney is probably like in, in education next to Ernie Minor. Okay, a uh, Judy Matney is probably the second person. Okay, yes. that I, you know, that I have. Like I would, I would say I owe a lot to you in the sense of like, you know, the way she, you know she handled her her class and the way she does things. You know, like I say, she you know uh, a wealth experience and she's she's dedicated to her profession also. So, so. I came to Dulles and lo and behold, that was Bang Lee's senior year, his last year there, right? Eli- eligibility. <laughs> yeah. So, so you know, and we could talk about that Dulles thing, which is just incredible. You know how they got the math magnet and all that story. But um, I was going to say, so then you transition into administration. And here's where I think you offer the most unique of perspectives. Because there are some legendary coaches, and I hope to have them on this program. But you have continued to support UIL academics along your journey as an administrator and up the hierarchy. And I remember... Do you remember that conversation we had on the bus about if we could uh, only devote devote resources to UIL? Can you share that story? <laughs> yeah, we all this. I mean, if, if people that the our kids know what we go through, right? Because they have to wake up at five yes. thirty in the morning, get on that big yellow bus, and travel two hours to British City, to Westbrook in Beaumont, okay, or to TMSCA State, you know, in, in San Antonio. So they will understand, but if any other honors outside that group and outside of UIO coaching or there have been a true UIO like in-depth coaches, they probably don't understand this thing. So we sat on this bus, I think it was like early morning, right? You know, yes. bringing coffee and stuff, you know, on that bus and talking. And it sounded like daydreaming early in the morning, right? You know, and, and one of them was that, that I you know, the frustration is that, you know, we got the, the, like, you know, like let's like, we do one in fall fundraising and we do one in the spring. That's how we, we, we host a tournament and after expenses and stuff, you might make what? A couple of thousand dollars. So we do two tournaments hoping to make about three to four thousand dollars 
clear out the expenses and, and, and tests and, and, and food and stuff and trophies to take our kit to, to pay for the local entry fees and also to TMSC State and for hotel room for TMSC State. That was our, our mission. And I think, you know, a couple of years, we sometimes, you know, we don't have enough school that participates and we might fall a little bit short of that. And we're always struggling, right? And we have to tell our kids like, hey guys, you know, this year we might have to supplement, y'all have to pay a little bit of money, but we never end up doing that. But me and you as coaches, we stress over that. Yes. Not only do we have to coach students, we have to worry about finance. We're like the finance officers for the club, right? So We're begging for fine. We're begging the principal. We're begging and to- pleading. And then, you know, uh, like I said, we have some good principal that was that would say, okay, I'll pay for your entry fee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, but you have to pay for everything else, you know, or for the buses. Okay, so and then some principal will say, okay, I'll pay for the entry fee and the buses, but then you pay for the, all, all the other stuff, the food costs and the hotel registration and all that stuff. So it's one of those things that it's never like, it's like we do it for the school, for our students, but we're struggling how to fund it. And then me and you talk like, if this was the football team, I'm actually telling the football coach, hey guys, I'll pay for the bus. Yeah, <laughs> and I'll pay for your uh, uh, entry fee to the football stadium for your team to compete. But then you have to figure out how to pay for everything else <laughs> you know, yeah. that goes with the, the cost with that with, with, with taking the team to, to the football game. Right? It's one of those that you know that that you know. I'm not I'm not I'm not negating sport. It's very important. It's, it has a very important place and you build that camaraderie. We just want to do the same thing for our academic student that does, doesn't kick up the ball far enough or throw the ball far enough. But they they are. Competitor, they are at um, uh, they are athletes, right? Yes, so we call them. So you know, academically, you know, I know they want to compete and represent their school and have school pride, but they can't do that because it's 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 our competition idea in my mindset is always about sports, right? So, so long story short, we daydream, right? And like, man, what if we become administrator? Imagine your own principal. We can set our money allocate aside, and then we talk about it until you know. Dream about it, and we our, our destination, and then we write our papers, and comes home at six o'clock at night, and they will go on, and move on, right? Never once thinking like you know, okay, that that talk eventually somehow came to fruition, yeah. right? So uh, when I became you know uh, uh, the dean of instruction at the boys' school uh, of the you know young men's college <clears throat> prep, that's when you know, uh, like I said, I have a, we have a very good supporting principal, Dr. Crook, you know, Damien Crook, and he pretty much allocated give us the the resources we needed, but of course, you know. I had to tell them like the value of you academic, and then of course we allocate money for that. And of course, from that point on, became principal and continue on allocating resources. The, the same thing I do with sports when I set money aside for coaches' stipends and stuff, I set the same money aside also for UIL academics. Yeah. So I know how you've supported from an administrative perspective, uh, and I'm so happy to have an ally on that side. You know what I'm saying? Because it helps the coach so much to have a principal. Uh, an administrator who, who who understands his goal, you know, in academics. Uh, but I know you've you've done summer camps. You've given kids Letterman jackets, uh, team uniforms. You've fed them well, uh, you know, all that stuff. And even beyond that, beyond the financial assistance, which is essential and necessary, you're one of the few, the only principal I know, who will come to our tournaments on a Saturday, sit all day. With the co- in the coach's room, grading with us. And can you imagine the powerful message those kids get out in the cafeteria when they see their principal at the actual tournament participating in the coach's room? Yeah, yeah it, but you got to remember, it's, it's, also, it's also in my DNA. It's, it's, I, I don't want to, to make it sound like it's a sacrifice. You remember I told you earlier, that, that is also my way out. I, I don't, you know... I was running out of time. I mean, I, my time was so booked. I mean, you know, it's like I was working six, seven days just to run the schools, right? Yeah. But I told myself, you know, I have to take a break from that. And believe it or not, and I meant what I say, my break was actually GYL academics. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to explain that. That was actually my way out of just in that, in that moment of time when I'm at a tournament, I don't think about principalship. I don't think about budgeting, hiring. I don't think about operation. I don't think about parent complaints. I don't think about politicians. I don't think about any of that stuff. All I think is that I'm a math and science coach, you know, 
and we sit there and break, and these are my colleagues, and we talk. You know, sometimes we talk, we shoot the bull. And oh, it's fine. They, it's they fine. Break, right? It's, it's that camaraderie, and also the students also need to see that. And to them, I'm not the principal. They see me as just another teacher, right? You know, yeah. that's there to support the team. So the mindset changes for me. That was my way out because it's my escape from that until I get back on Mon on Sunday, Monday again. You know, so. so so, you know, we're friends and we've been friends for a long time, but I have to say from an administrative perspective, there's one time I have to share with the audience that you saved my tail. <laughs> no, no, I have to say this story because thank God you were a principal at this time. You know how I, I, I can drive buses, right? I used to drive a bus. I have my CDL and back in those days, they let you keep a bus on campus. So I used to use the bus for local tournaments, but there was some ambiguity about taking it to San Antonio. So I didn't ask. I just took advantage of the ambiguity. Took the bus to San Antonio. As we're entering the fort, and I have, you know, the math team with me. Some parents following along. As I enter the 410 loop, I see smoke in the back window. And then I look at the, 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 the uh, gauges, and they're all in extreme. I'm like, oh, no, the bus broke down. The bus broke down. I parked on the side, and I don't know who to call. I don't know who to call. But I have a principal friend, and so I call you, and you say you went, you took me and my pa my parent volunteers, you went to Enterprise, you rented cars for everybody, you saved our butts, man, and I really I, thank God you were a principal, and you had sympathy for us, and you and helped us. I have, I have to say thank you because I was in a tight one then. Well, so like during that time, we're all employed at HISD. You were coaching at another school in HISD. These are our HISD students, right? And the bus breaks down. You know, and you have to have transportation, and you have. And it was the beginning of the of the trip of the of the, the state competition for for TMSCA. It's a state competition. Yes. You know, and you know, I was I was already there with my with my school and my team and my coaches, right? And you were there. You were on your way there with your team, right? Carnegie uh, Vanguard. I was at Carnegie Vanguard at the time. Carnegie Vanguard. I didn't want to mention. It. Yeah. So, you know, okay. and you know, it's 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 this resources to support the academic accomplishment of what. Cause Carnegie has some outstanding group of kids there. We you had know, Top Gun that year. We had yeah, Top that, Gun that year. I mean, y'all have a group that could compete with the Dulles and the, I mean, the, the Clement, the, the, the Fort Bend School, okay, the, uh, the North uh, uh, Shore School. For, I mean, you know, you, you, you have the towns compete There's with talent the there. in the 6A. Yes. So during that time, 5A, 6A, right? So, you know, I, I want, you know, you know, it's just that, and we were friends also. So, like I say, the resource shared to support our students in HISD, right? So that's I, that's how I see. Oh, I appreciate it. Then, but you, you saved know, my boy. Can you imagine the stress I was under on the side of the road? I have students with me in a different city. Oh man, I was sweating. That was so stressful. Thank God you were there to help me out, man. I mean, it was it was a rough moment. So I just wanted to share that story because uh, you really saved the day. Then I, I do want to go back and I want to talk about something. I feel. Like when I personally entered uh, UIL with you in the early 2000s, late 90s, I feel like it was a golden years for Region 3. Every year, though, every weekend there was a tournament. We had Ken Walker at Sweeney. We had Faye Parrish in Bridge City. Dolores Macero in Westbrook. We had Muskello in, 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 uh, in Humble. We had Dan in Liberty. We had every week. And not only that, those tournaments were packed. The, the, the ranking sheets would have names spilling beyond the final line. Mm -hmm. uh, and I feel like Region 3 has kind of faltered lately. You know, how do we get those golden years back? You know, how do we get those golden years back? Well, there's two factors. People like me and you, Ken Walker, God bless us, so the Lord's Messiahs and, and, yeah. and, and Faith Bears. Um, you know, Dan, um, and then, you know, Josie Mallory, let's not forget uh, Josie Mallory. Kirby is, uh, is uh, you know, he's staying by retirement. Mm. Those those people are even leaving the profession, retiring, or they they got to the point in their life where, you know, they they they, they taking a break. And or they leave, they left school. So once those people leave, who's next in line to carry on? So the, the problem here is this. If there is a stipend, Remember how much the stunning we got in Fort Bend? Peanuts. Peanuts. Yeah. Peanuts. Yeah. Peanuts. Yeah. Peanuts. Yeah. Peanuts. Yeah. Peanuts. Yeah.
Two hundred. No, I can tell you exact. Two hundred and fifty dollars. How many? How many Saturdays do we go? We give up. A lot. Uh, 13, 14? Eight or nine Saturdays. Yeah, that's minimum eight or nine. Yeah. That's not including the local tournament we attend. Yes, exactly. But like outside the district. District, we region, also, state. We also spend some time a lot of these tournament falls on where spring break, right? The, yeah. Like, San Antonio, the, the, the state meet. Okay? We don't get compensated for that. We leave on a Thursday and come back on a Sunday evening, right? We don't get compensated for that. So $250. I remember that. I fought, I was on the committee that fought for a spike for your academic. We finally got 250 bucks. And then they turn around and slap in the face. What's the slap in the face? Tell me. Oh, you coach no oh. sense, calculate, mad, it's not. Oh, it's, it's still one. It's you, don't, one you don't get one. multiple. Yes. It's like saying you coach football, basketball, and soccer, or, 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 or no, whatever. You only get one stipend. You don't get. <laughs> so <laughs> it's one of those things. But you know, during that time, we didn't do it for that, right? Of course, no. it is for that. So to, to answer your question, that's the first thing that we lost a lot of experience. Or they retire, and it's hard to get the new generation of of math and science teacher who's willing to give up that personal times. That's a lot of personal time. Yes. Yeah, I also mentioned that's just a time to take get to tournament on weekends. I never mentioned the amount of time you have to practice at the schools. <laughs> practice. Oh my goodness, two three hours a day. Okay. You know, sometimes yes. okay? the bell rings at what uh, uh, during <clears throat> that time uh, uh, two thirty two forty five. We stay until like six o'clock, and then we leave, right? Yeah. So, you know, we we don't talk about that also, right? So it, it's, and I don't blame. Don't, don't get me wrong. Yeah. This is not a critique on the math and science, the new math and science coaches. They should be compensated for those times. Yes. If they're willing to give the time, they should be compensated for the for that stipends. The point is that that lead to the second problem. So now we lost that expertise that we wanted to do it for free or literally do it for penis. That, you know, that like you say, the second thing now is that what are the school and the school district policies on uh, to ensure that math and science academics is on the same level or not? Forget about math. I'm sorry, UIO academic as a whole. Yes, yes. Speech, well, speech debate do have a good side to go with that. They they have yeah, a good yeah. support system for that. But social study, reading, writing, all that stuff. Yes. Okay. What are they? system place for the district and, the, and, and from the principalship of each school to support the UI academic as they would do for UIL sports or athletics. So that's the question we need to ask also is the two-tier approach. Who's the new one coming in or they willing to give up their personal time? Yeah. And then the second part is that a will or district and school willing to invest the funding to make sure that our students who are compete academically has a way out to compete and represent the school like they do with the athletes huh. and, and invest money into that program. Yeah. yeah, because we need to replenish the ranks. We need to replenish mm -hmm. the ranks. As these legendary coaches are, are either passing on or retiring, you know, we need to replenish those ranks. You know, I got to, there's a legend here. Is it true that one of your children was due during the Team ACA State Tournament Week? <laughs> I heard a rumor that you had your wife delay birth. So we can go to Timmy State Tournament. Is that true? As we can do. See? The level of commitment. The level of commitment. So, here's what I want. Because you have such a wealth of experience, a knowledge, wisdom. There are three groups of people I want you to address. I'm going to tell you. The first, I want you to give advice. First, to students. Second, to coaches. And third, to administrators. So what advice would you give to a young student who happens upon this interview? Okay. So let's, let's look at the students, okay? Students, if you organize this enough, okay? And also from two approaches from the students to make sure you have a club in that, that you need to talk to your administrator to support that. The more you talk and ask them to support an academic program, they will start to listen. That's the first thing, right? To start adding resources. But as far as you yourself concerned, if you want to compete, if if you want, and most most of our academic UI academic team are introvert students, right? Especially in the math and science area. Yes. They they tend to be mostly introvert. <clears throat> they don't talk. They don't raise hell. They don't do a lot of stuff, right? You might have to edit that last part. Out. <laughs> 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 but uh, um, you know, they they tend to be, you know, like okay. 
if you provide for them, they will do it. If you don't, they just go on, they'll study, do hard. You know, they, they work hard and study hard and, 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 and go to college and then be successful in their life, right? But they will miss out on that high school experience of camaraderie. The stuff that, that some reserve usually for athletes, right? That 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 unified team, that camaraderie, that 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 spirit, the core, you know, that, that we yes. have. If you want that, then you need to organize yourself and stay on course with it. Okay? And and don't give up. Okay? Anybody can be a state champion. Any team that works hard enough can be a state champion. It doesn't matter if you're from the suburb or inner cities. You've proven that, right? Mm -hmm. With your team that you led. We, the well, team that we led. We led. Okay? Wisdom High so, School. So, state champions. So, yeah, so, so, so you know, it's, it's, it, when you prove that through dedication, hard work, you know, you can do it. So that's my advice to the students. Okay. Okay? The, the coaches, okay, first I want to thank them. Because as, we, as all these decades that we've been doing this, we know it's a thankless job. You know, uh, the conversation is like nothing there. We do we got our love, okay? But please, you know, for the sake of those group of students that needs that, that voice, that way out, continue to advocate for them. Continue to go to your principal and advocate and, and, and ask them, you know, we need this. And then, you know, continue to dedicate your time to support the program, okay, to the coaches. And I know I'm asking a lot because I have no right to, okay? In the sense is that there are, there, as teachers, we already work our butt off already. Oh, you've you know, done that. Some planning, grading, papers. But the effective teachers are the ones that are just working the tail. So on top of that, we're doing something extra without a thank you or a, a conversation or a pat in the back. So I'm asking a lot, but I'm asking at least, mm, right? Because yes. if we say, you know, for the future sake about these school students, right, that, that needs to feel like they... They want to be part of the school, but how do we give them that high, that, that high school experience, right? For school administrators, okay, we always say we're about the kids. We're about making sure that all kids succeed. All kids has, has an outlet. But what is that outlet looks like for all kids? I'm talking about all kids. What is that outlet look like? If we say that, it's, it's just words only. What, is our, what are our actions behind those words? Show me the actions. Show me and the money. Is, Show me the yeah, money as a coach. That's what I meant by the actions. <laughs> so now, and it doesn't take much. All you have to do is start small by just allocate just a little bit of resources and paying your coaches. Ask them to stay after school. Go look for these students there. It's there every campus at them. And organize an UI academic program. Okay? And then host a small a tournament, a local tournament. Just you know, just that and support, buy some trophies, some ribbons, and host it. And just give them a way, the kids a way out to compete. But here, remember, school is academic. That's our first priority. So why is competition for school focused on sport only? Don't get me wrong. We should do that. I don't want to be sure that this conversation about one versus the other or about the naysay of sport. I totally support our sport program. You know that. I do. Our soccer, even our football program, yeah. most of my lot don't play, they play soccer. We support it wholeheartedly. I value our sports. Our kids need the sports. But at the same time, do it all the way across the board and provide the opportunity, just a small amount, to, to host a tournament for the academic uh, competition also. That's why I'm so happy to have you in this interview because you bring... Uh, you know, a perspective that's rarely seen, you know, and, um, you know, I know you're a legend. I know it because I've seen you. I've been there. Um, but didn't Team SCA officially recognize you as Coach of the Year one year? Uh, I think in the at Hightower? Yeah, it's at Hightower, something like that. Yeah, yeah I remember yeah. you being recognized. Yeah. Like okay. you know, black or something. Yes. Yes, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> well, it's nice to get some recognition when it comes, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so I want to say... So now that uh, looking back at it all, you know, you have such a wonderful, unique perspective. Uh, what is the single most memorable thing about your UIL uh, involvement throughout the years? Single? Well, yeah, I know it's hard to pick one, right? <laughs> if you had to pick one, what's the most memorable thing? It's like, it's like asking me to pick my favorite children, right? And I have several, right? So <laughs> it's, uh, uh, it's not... I don't know, it's not a single thing, it's more like the underdog thing, you know, like, you know how, 
how you love the underdog, right? You know, that, that people, you know. Okay, so let's take the most recent one, right? 2019, right? We have a group of kids. When we start building a program of wisdom, right? And and after a couple of years of experience with them, you know, it takes a couple of years to build a program, right? To yes. get there, because you start with the, the core freshman group, right? As they move up, we start seeing from fruition. So in their sophomore year, right, you know, you, know, you start making some, some noise, right? That, that core group, right, in the sophomore year. And I think we went to state that year, one second place. Yeah. I think the following year, we went to state again, one second place. And Jesus, Conor Tito from, from, from El Paso, outstanding group of kids. I love them. The coach, the nicest person you ever met, very truly nature good coach. I'm talking about coaches like that that was taking, that are going into the profession. Yeah. The problem is that I can count people like him on one hand, like yeah. you know, literally, right? Few and far between. Students. And he was, I mean, just a good competitor. <clears throat> but man, he was strong and good. And you knew it was like the road to win state go through Conatillo in five days. You know that, right? We all know that, yes. right? And and we work hard and we set our target on that. But boy, every year we fall short. We, we, we got there, but their school was just so outrageous, right? They, they went gold, we went silver, right? And then the, that, that third year, 2009, the last UIL before the, the, uh, the pandemic, right? Um, you know, that year for some reason, the unlike previous year, we were neck and neck like we have a shot, right, to win, right? This year, from 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 TMS State to district to regional, we're like we're like fifth or sixth place behind everybody from the state for as team scores. So it's not even from, from like second or third score, right? We thought like as team there was score, there was team that out of nowhere was beating our score. I'm like, and, and don't get me wrong, our score wasn't bad. It's just that their score got higher. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We were just this, we were at the same level we've been, right? And we competing. They just jumped right? yeah. at, at the at, at, at the the district regional level. And me and you were talking like, man, these 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 scores. And then we went to state that year, right, to represent a region three. And you know, and we knew we didn't win region three. We're not going to get out because the wild call was going to become region three. It's going to come up somewhere else, right? So, um, so we we won region three. And and you asked me for a proud moment also. We also won what in region beside calculator? Mathematics. Okay. And and tell me what without going into a lot of detail, why was that so proud? Because there was a moment where a shock factor came in. <laughs> they wanted to recount, they wanted to regrade it. <laughs> because why they couldn't believe that. They couldn't believe we beat them. A school called Wisdom in Houston ISD, a, 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 you know, a, a school that's nowhere out of nowhere won the mathematical uh, 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 first place in mathematics and calculator. Yeah. But the math was so shocking, right? Because yeah. historically, who won that, that at regional usually? Yeah, the more affluent uh, schools. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, uh, and so, you know, that, that was that was a bitter, a, a bitter, sweet, you know, moment there where I feel bad, you know, that, that the other team didn't get repeat, but at the same time, we, we shocked everybody, right? Yeah. But let's go back to calculator. So we went there. So our regional, out of the, out of the five teams, the, the, the four representing region one, two, three, and four, and the wild card team, where did we place? Fifth. Oh, fifth, yes, exactly. <laughs> Even the wild card team from region two, I believe, beat our team score, right? So we went to state, and we were practicing. I remember where we were at. We, we, we found a new place to practice the last couple of years, okay? Uh, uh, we went to the uh, the science building all the way up there, and we found a little nuclear up there. We practiced up there. It was quiet and nice place. And we discovered it ourselves, right? So we practiced our kit. So what was the comment me and you talked to them about, okay, about the kids? Let's say, look, we have nothing to what? Lose. To lose, right? Let it what? Let it fly. Yes. I'm not, we're not going to be hard. We're not, we, we, we're not going to be disappointed. We, may, we say you made it to state. Yes. Every one of you now, it doesn't matter you come in the last place or the first place team at, at, at UIL State, you all qualify for State. Scholarship. Yes, scholarship. That, we told that. You all, you are champions. You make the state, you are one of the five best teams in the state of Texas in Division 5A. Okay? Point blank. Relax. Just do what you know you do. Just, all that I ask for is one, and we ask for is one. Don't miss any punch here. Punch in is just a given God thing for you to 
get those, those are just quick, easy, don't make any dumb mistake, right? How many punishing they miss a state? Zero none. or zero? Yes. None. None. They did not miss any punching, and that's how we won. And they won state. <laughs> what a story. What a story. <laughs> So, you know, and I love it because I shared in that experience with you. I was there with you. And that, you were the coach. No, you so, were the, actually the more instrumental coach. So, oh, I'll you. tell you right now, in front of the whole yes, worldwide audience, okay, I, I'm not a genius in math or science. I'm not, I know a lot about science, but certain areas of biology and some, you know, and, 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 and chemistry to a certain degree. I make no bone, and I know to the point of certain advanced math. But not into theory or math like you do. Oh well. Okay. Thank you. You flatter and, and, me. And, 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 and to like the, the stuff in UIO math goes beyond the curriculum. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, that. it does. So, so I mean, it, it uses theorem where half the people probably don't know where the theorem comes from. Yeah, right? yeah. So, so it's good. So we talk about. It. So, so, so I made no bones about that. Okay. Yeah. My 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 efficiencies and my well knowledge and what I'm good at is also is that systems and expectation support. Okay, and motivations. Well, I've okay. seen it. I know. Okay, so. it, it, I've seen you in, in action. I know there's there's very few Jonathan Trends out there that can motivate and inspire the troops the way you can. You know, so. Mm -hmm. So, as we conclude this interview, I, I want to ask you, uh, what does the future hold for Jonathan Trend? What does the future hold? Well, I'm getting to a part of my career that I'm... I'm wrapping up. You already know for a couple of years now. I thought about doing this a couple of years ago and last year even, but now I am, uh, you know, I'm looking to, you know, uh, uh, call an end to my career, you know, as far as full time officially, and uh, you know, I'm I'm looking to, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, to retire basically, and um, and then maybe if I do something, come back and do some consulting work or something like that, that that would do something that to my passion, you know. Something that I I want to do, you know. Will we still be able to find you in that coach's room on tournament day? I think there's a good likelihood you might. Oh, you will. It's hard yes. to get out of your blood. It's in your blood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I do come back in in, a, in that capacity, you know, to do some part time stuff, I will focus more on that. But I want to go to, like I said, you know, schools that 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 historically, you know, not represented or underserved. That you know, just to make sure that we we want to show that hey you know there are students that are just as gifted and talented and smart in any system in any school that will be you know that kind of caliber okay that can win state well if anybody can do that it's yeah. you you're uniquely qualified you have uh, the perspective the wisdom uh, if anybody can do it it's you so um, I want to take a moment and I want to say you know uh, how much I appreciate our friendship and how our friendship continues and how forever ingrained in my mind is how you led students, how you led teams. And, you know, I, I just feel privileged. You know, you know how you were the number two to um, Ermini and then you became the number one? Well, I was your number two. Mm -hmm. And that mentorship impacted me for the rest of my career. You know what I'm saying? So I owe a personal thanks because... Because of our uh, past crossing so early, I was able to go through my career and impact students. You know, I'm a, I'm a Jonathan Trim disciple. And you set the standard. And that standard's high, my friend. That standard is high. So I just, I'm so happy to have a friendship with you after all these years. I'm so happy that our, our paths cross. And you know what? We're going to continue to enjoy our friendship, enjoy our common interest in UIL. So I just want to say thank you for coming here, man. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, uh, Saul. Thank you so much. And like I say, uh, I value our friendship. I value our, you know, what we experienced throughout all these decades, in the last couple of decades, right? You know, over two decades actually. So, uh, you know, it's just that, you know, I want to thank you also for your dedication. I mean, when I asked you to come to Wisdom, and I and I, and I asked you, I asked you point blank. I said, look, I know that I'm going to have to leave Wisdom soon. Okay, in a couple of years. I need, you know, during that time I was contemplating retirement, right? And you knew that. I need somebody to to know and invest it in UIL academic, in a program where, you know, it continue on to provide service to, to our students. You know our students. 
they're, they're the most at risk group of students, you know, uh, uh, one of the most at risk group, you know, in, in the state, right? I mean, you have 2,000 kids, and how many of them are e, uh, e, uh, e, uh, e, uh, ESL learners? Oh, yes. Almost 1,300 yeah. students. That's, that's 60, almost 60% of our students are ESL learners, okay? I find, you know, so, you know, we, we have students that, you know, that are new, that are learning, that are struggling the language, but you know what? That doesn't mean that they can't learn the high-level math orders and science orders, right? So you are, We know UIL takes them to the next level. It mm -hmm. takes them to the next level, and that's why we're so vested in this UIL deal. So, Jonathan Trim, thank you very much for, for being part of this interview. I appreciate you, and I look forward to our continued interaction, you know? Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. F farewell, friend. Thank you. Bye-bye. Farewell. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Jonathan Trim, and that's my hope to bring many more fascinating characters and stories to the Texas math Mundo audience. Uh, before I bid you, bid you farewell, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below. So long for now, this is Texas Math Mundo.